Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to learn about significant figures. So what are significant figures or sig figs and how do they work? Well it says right here that significant figures are important when reporting scientific data because they give the reader an idea of how well you actually measured and or reported your data. So what does that mean? Well let's suppose we're going to take the mass of uh, some sugar or some sort of powder substance, right? We're going to use this little scale right here to take the mass. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, or we're going to repeat this twice. So there's going to be two trials where we're going to measure the mass of this powder substance right here. So we put it on our scale, and before we put it on our scale, we notice that our scale is precise to the thousandths place, right? It's precise to the thousandths place. So we put this powder on our scale, and it comes out to be... Uh, 1.234 grams okay so the scale reads 1.234 grams and in the uh, student's lab book they actually report the data as being 1.234 grams the data here has been reported to the correct number of sig figs what this number tells you or tells the reader is that the scale that you used to measure this substance here was precise to the thousands place all right so it gives the reader an idea of the precision of the instruments that you're using to take your measurements. So the data here was reported to the correct number of sig figs. Now let's suppose in trial two, same scenario, we have a scale here and we end up putting the powdery substance on the scale and the scale reads 1.234. However, the student in his or her lab manual uh, reports the data to be 1.2 grams. This would be incorrect, okay? The data has not been reported to the correct number of sig figs here. Our scale is precise to the thousandths place, but we only, are, we only reported our data to the tenths place. Okay, so the student here did not report the, the data to the correct number of sig figs. Okay, so what we can do in, in science and specifically in chemistry is we can set up a, a set of rules when we're doing our mathematical calculations to keep in mind the level of precision that, uh, of the instruments that we're using. And so now let's take, it the, take a look at the rules uh, for counting significant figures and then apply those rules to doing some mathematical calculations. Okay, so here we go. It says uh, the rules for counting sig figs. First and foremost, it says that all non-zero integers are going to be significant. So numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, they're always going to be significant. So if we take a look at this number right here, 5,432,215, all of these are going to be counted as significant. They're all non-zero integers. So this number right here has seven sig figs. Let's look at rule number two. Leading zeros are never significant. Leading zeros are all the zeros that lead up to the very first non-zero integer. So all of these right here are leading zeros and they're never significant. So this number right here has three sig figs. Let's look at this one. It says captive zeros. Captive zeros are zeros that are between two non-zero integers and they're always significant. So if we take a look right here, this zero here is a captive zero. It's between the three and the four. These zeros here are captive zeros. They're between the five and the one. So if we were to count how many sig figs are in this number right here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This number has seven sig figs. Okay, trailing zeros are significant only if there's a decimal in the numbers. So let's suppose we write one million like this. How many sig figs are here? Well, there's only one sig fig. That's right here. These trailing zeros, the trailing zeros are all the zeros that come after the very last non-zero integer. And so the trailing zeros here are not significant because there is no decimal in the number. So this number here only has one sig fig. But take a look over here. If we write a million like this, then this number here has seven significant figures. Why? Because the trailing zeros now count since there's a decimal in this number right here. Right, so we have three, six, plus this one right here for seven. All right, next rule says numbers obtained from counting or numbers that are part of a conversion factor have unlimited sig figs. So if I, if I count up the number of students that uh, are in a class uh, and I say, hey, there's five students, this number right here has an unlimited number of significant figures. If I said three feet, uh, there are three feet in one yard, that is going to have an unlimited number of significant figures, the three and the one because it was part of a conversion factor. All right, let's take a look at the last rule. It says, when counting numbers expressed in scientific notation, apply the rules above to the mantissa only. What is the mantissa? Well, if we take a look at scientific notation, this right here is the mantissa. So we don't even need to really look at this right here. So if we want to know how many sig figs are in this number right here, we have one, the cap is zero for two, and the two non-zero integers, three and four right here. So we have four sig figs in this number. Okay, so now that we know how to count 
sig figs. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, let's take a look at this example here. All we have to do is count the number of sig figs that are in each one of these. So if we take a look right here, it looks like the 1 is going to be significant. These are all capped at 0, so they're significant. The 2, the 3, the 4 are significant. And the trailing zeros here are not significant. Why? Because there is no decimal in the number. So it looks like there's going to be 7 sig figs in this number right here. If we take a look at this one, the, the 2 is going to be significant, but none of these zeros are significant. Why? Because there is no decimal in the number. And so these trailing zeros are not going to count. So there's only one significant figure in this number right here. If we take a look at this one, none of these leading zeros count. They never count. The 5, the 5, the 6, the captive 0 counts, the 4 counts, the 3 counts, and this 0 now counts because there's a decimal in the number. So how many sig figs are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 it looks like. Let's take a look at this one. This is the same number as we see above. However, it has a decimal in it, so all the zeros are now significant, the two significant. And all these little zeros here are going to be significant. The trailing zeros count because there's a decimal in the number here. So how many sig figs are here? 3, 6, 9, 12, 14 sig figs in this number. Let's take a look at this one right here. We have scientific notation, so we only need to look at the mantissa. And it looks like we're going to have 1, 2, 3, and this cap is 0 for 4 sig figs. Let's take a look at this one right here. The 6 is significant. These captive zeros count. The 4 counts. These captive zeros count. The 2, the 1 counts. And these trailing zeros now count because there's a decimal in the number. So how many sig figs are here? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 sig figs it looks like. And last but not least, we have 500 cars. Well, how did we obtain this number? Well, we must have obtained this number right here from counting, right? We have 500 cars. Therefore, this is going to have an unlimited number of sig figs. Okay, so now that we know how to count significant figures, let's take a look at how we're going to do math in here from now on, or math and chemistry from now on. Okay, so from now on, when we add and subtract and multiply and divide, there's going to be some rules. And you should never have to ask your chemistry teacher after watching this video, um, hey, where should I round to? Hey, do you want me rounding to the tens, the hundreds, the thousands? Hey, where should I round? Uh, after we go through this little slide here, you should uh, be able to determine that yourself. So let's take a look at the rules for significant figures and calculations. It says right here, when adding and subtracting, round the answer to the least number of places in the decimal portion of any number in the problem. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to add these three numbers up right here, and we're going to get this answer right here. If you leave this answer like this, it's going to be marked wrong, and here's why. The rule states that when we add and subtract from now on in chemistry, you must take a look at the numbers that you're adding and subtracting. And specifically, you must look at how many decimal places there are in each number. For example, there's four right here. There's two decimal places here, and there's five right here. So when we add these all together, we get this right here, which has five decimal places. The rule states when adding and subtracting, you have to have the lowest number of decimal places uh, in your answer as the things that you added up. So our answer can only be two decimal places. So we need to round this to just two decimal places. So this 8 here, we're going to look at the third decimal place, and this 8 is going to round this 2 up to a 3, so we have 130.53. This has two places to the right of the decimal, just like this one did over here. Okay, so from now on, when we add and subtract, that's the rule. What about when we multiply and divide? When we multiply and divide, it says the least number of significant figures in any number of the problem determines the number of significant figures in the answer. So what does that mean? Well, let's suppose we multiply these four values up and we get this answer right here. This answer will technically be marked incorrect. Well, why? Well, we have to take a look at how many sig figs there are in each number. There are three here. There's a total of five here. There's a total of four sig figs here. And there's a total of three here. Okay, our answer must be in the lowest amount of sig figs as the things that we either multiplied or divided. Okay, so that's going to be three, three sig figs. So we have to round this to just three sig figs. So we'll start with our first significant figure on the left, which is this one, two, and three. And if we take a look at one past this third sig fig, this here is a nine. This nine is going to raise this up to a three. Remember the rule, five or more, raise the score, four or less, let it rest. So this nine is going to raise this up to a three for 133. 
All right, this has three sig figs, just like the lowest number of sig figs in the numbers that you multiplied or divided. So now let's apply these rules to a couple different examples. All right, so if we take a look, we have 32.232, uh, and we're going to add that. Uh, we're going to add 12.2 to this. And so when I add these together, what I'll end up getting is 44.434. And if we left this answer like this, it would be incorrect. Why? Because if we take a look, this only has three decimal places and this only has one. So the rule says when we add or subtract, my answer can only have one place to the right of the decimal. So we'll go to the second place and it's a three. Four less, let it rest. So we're not going to increase this at all. So the final answer here should just be 44.4. Anything else will be marked incorrect. Let's take a look at the next example. Okay, if we take a look at this example right here, we take a look at this example right here and we add these two numbers together, what we will end up getting is 399.2978, 399.2978. And if we leave our answer like this, it's going to be incorrect. Once again, we're adding or subtracting. So this is three decimal places. And this number here has four decimal places. So my answer can only have three decimal places. One, two, three, five or more raise the score. Four or less let it rest. This eight is going to round this up. So our final answer here should be 399.298. And it looks like this got deleted up here. So I think the final answer here was going to be 44.4. .4. So we'll just leave that right there. All right? This has one place. This has three. So our answer can only have one place to the right of the decimal. Let's take a look at this one right here. When we uh, put this in the calculator, we'll end up with 108.891528. And it looks like right here, there's four decimal places here. There's one, two, three, four, five, there's six decimal places. And this doesn't have any at all. So it looks like we're going to have to round this number to the nearest whole number since there's no places to the right of the decimal in this number. So I'll take a look. This 8 is going to round this up to a 9 and we'll end up with 109 as our final answer. Let's take a look at this one over here. Now we're dividing. So when we take 155.32 and divide that by 4.2, we're going to end up with, uh, let's see here, 36.9809. Five two three eight. If you left your answer like this, it is incorrect. When we multiply and divide, this number here has five sig figs. This number here has two. This must be rounded to only two sig figs. So if we count from the left, here's our first sig fig, our second. Draw a little dashed line here. And this nine is going to raise this up to a seven for an even 37. So that is going to be our final answer. Let's take a look at this. When we take 72.23 times 2.0, we end up with 144.46. If we leave our answer like this, it's incorrect. Why? Because we're multiplying here. And so this number here has four sig figs. This has two. This answer must be rounded to only two sig figs. So how are we going to do this? Well, we can do this a couple ways. We can uh, put this in scientific notation, or we can just round this to 140. If we write 140 like this, we have two sig figs now, which matches the two sig figs up here. And if we want, we can put this in scientific notation. Either one of those will work. Let's take a look at this next example. We have 3.5 times 40 times 200. And we end up with 28,000. And if we left our answer like this, it would be incorrect. Why? Because this has two sig figs. This only has one and this has three. So our answer can only be one sig fig long. So... How do we do this? Well, this is our first sig fig right here. We look one past that. That 8 is going to round this up to a 3, and we'll end up with 30,000. Not just 3, but 30,000. So keep that in mind. So that should be our final answer. Let's take a look at one where we're multiplying and dividing. So we take 2.542 times 1.22, and we end up with, let's see here, we have uh, 4 sig figs here. And we have three sig figs here. So when we multiply these together, we get 3.10 for three sig figs. And now we're going to divide this by, it looks like we're adding now. So we're going to take 6.3 for two 
two, sorry, plus 3.23, and we're going to get, let's see here, this has four places to the right of the decimal, and this only has two places to the right of the decimal, right? This has two places, and this has four, so the rule changes a little bit, and so our answer can only be two places to the right of the decimal, and we end up with 9.57. So now we take 3.10 and we're going to divide this by 9.57 and let's see here this is three sig figs right here and this is three sig figs right here so our answer can only be three sig figs and we end up with 0 0.324 it looks like. And you might be wondering if you should put this zero yeah in chemistry you're usually going to put this zero before the decimal so not 0.324 but 0 0.324. Okay, so that's how significant figures works. Hopefully now you can count significant figures in a number. You can do addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, and you should never have to ask your chemistry teacher anymore, hey, where should I round to? Where do you want me to round to? So if you liked what you see, go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner. Leave any comments down below that you might have, and I hope you found this helpful.